Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for making time for us. Uh, my name is Joe Green. I'm a solutions architect for the Cloud and Data Center for Data Networks. And we are a uh, value-added reseller integrator managed services provider based in the Mid-Atlantic region. But we have customers all throughout uh, the lower 48 and hopefully soon going to Hawaii, but we'll see about that. But uh, getting right to it, we're gonna talk today about one of the, the technologies that I think is pretty significant. Uh, in the industry today and why I think it's going to grow in importance. So with that, let me get started with some of the, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some of the major trends and why we think that those line up very, very well with the capabilities inside of Azure Virtual Desktop. And then I'm gonna talk about why I think this actually matters. I've attended my fair share of webinars and I'm going, all right, well, does this really apply to me? And it is my opinion that this is pretty significant and, and something that I would like to see all of my customers taking advantage of, whether they're using us to help them with it or taking advantage on their own. This is a pretty cool solution. So here are the major trends we're seeing in 2022, first of all. Uh, so without question, remote work is here to stay. People are going to need to be able to have info, uh, access to solutions that are running both on premises as well as in the cloud. So that hybrid work experience is absolutely something that we're going to see both in terms of where the solutions are provided and where they're accessed from. You're going to need solutions that you can reconfigure very quickly on the fly. So we like to call that composable solutions. And so being able to design and quickly customize and quickly recustomize and basically reprovision solutions very, very easily to have a dynamic experience is going to be critical to adjust for security needs, to adjust for application changes, to be able to, uh, to increase the value out of test and dev. All these things are going to be critical and you're going to need a very dynamic environment. Business technologies, which I like to interpret as a fancy word for solutions architect, but in, in all fairness, it's people that are looking at the technology and the designs and actually doing the accounting on top of that. So it's not just people that are coming up with fancy solutions that are good with automation and good with uh, ease of management and are good with security, but also are calculated for what they're going to cost and are we planning the investments out for their full life cycle. And for us at Data Networks, when we're looking at solutions, we like to sit there and, and use five years. That's how many years we want to see. That's when we look at customers making investment, can they extend that investment to five years and beyond? So without question, I've already talked about automation, but we're now to a point to where automation and basic automation is very, very refined. And now we're talking about hyper automation. So that's solutions that make it so that you have the same experience. You're having a good experience, access to your equipment, access to your applications, to your services, and having that anywhere, from anywhere, from any device, any application. So that kind of, of self-healing, that kind of, of access of, of dynamic capability, that's going to be critical if you're trying to get the most value. Otherwise, you're, you're basically, at that point, you're going to incur what we like to call technical debt. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that security is absolutely the most critical component today with the, basically with the bad guys having more and more attacks and with it being, the attacks being more and more distributed. We are basically security by default or going towards that zero trust configuration or trying to just be compliant with NIST, CSF. These are all a very standards must haves that you must have in the foundation of all solutions. And with everybody working everywhere and with, with, with people having to provide services more and more uh, distributed throughout the environment, distributed hybrid ecosystems are critical. What does that mean? It means that I need to be able to have people who are in New York, people who are in LA, people who are in Alaska, people who happen to be vacationing in Hawaii. They need to have a very similar experience that you need to provide to them, even if, if and being able to have them have that to, no matter where they're going have what they're accessing it from or how they're accessing it to have that same experience. And how do you simplify this? One of the challenges we see throughout all of technologies right now is customers realizing that they need to have single sources of truth, whether that is for data or for identity or for what devices they're going to manage or for security, single sources of tr truth that are mapped out so that you say this is where it starts and this is where it ends, that's going to be critical to your success if you're working in IT today. So before we get any further, I wanna talk about the different types of investments that people have made in their environments and where you see 
uh, that where we see the challenges, because this is basically the key to where data networks as a company, what we're trying to drive for our customers. So if you make an investment that requires you to continuously, as the amount of users adopted, requires you to throw a higher and higher amount of money at it all the time or more and more time, and you're constantly having to reprovision and reconfigure that solution, and it's eating up all your time. If you're throwing money at the solution more and more to get that, uh, that exponential growth, those, that orange line at the bottom, that is a terrible investment. That is a good sign of technical debt. And where does that incur the most? Where people deploy solutions where they're creating data silos. They're creating solutions that don't integrate well into their existing investments. They're creating solutions that as you adopt more and more of them require greater and greater complexity and greater fine tuning. And so those are the type of solutions that we are constantly on the, on the hunt for to get those eliminated and pulled out of our customer environments. The problem with those solutions is, is that the longer you hold on to them, the more expensive it gets to get off of them. And legacy investments are notorious. So notorious for having that, that exponential growth cost. So if you're still running on, on older versions of Windows Server that are no longer even supported, if you've got a bunch of solutions in your environment that are not under support, there's a good chance you're gonna see that orange line as more and more people use that solution and the what it's gonna cost you to get off of that solution. If you're doing point solutions, if you're saying, I need this capability, so I'm gonna deploy a single, I'm gonna make an investment into a point solution that doesn't integrate. I've got you know, a VMware, we've got a lot of expertise in VMware control planes. And then all of a sudden I say, ah, I wanna switch over to a, a Linux control plane. Well, that may not be the best transition for, I want to go to a Mac OS control plane or a Microsoft control. It doesn't matter if you don't, if you're going to have to retrain your teams, your staff, if you're going to have to figure out ways to later, if rows to pull that data out, you're going to experience that, that exponential growth. And that is a bad IT investment all the way around. The next way things scale linearly. It's the most common when we think of endpoints. Most endpoints scale linearly. If I need 20 laptops or I need 50, each one of those additional laptops, you know, for the most part, is going to be the same investment over and over again based on the number of users. It's a one to one or or some ratio, but it's you know if you remember your your old uh, early geometry class, y equals mx plus b. It's it's a linear equation that is following the slope of the line. And in IT, the investments we have to see these days then is we want to see logarithmic growth. That's that green line up at the top. That means that the, as we increase adoption, we gain efficiencies. This is critical. That's a good sign of good automation, of, of dynamic capabilities. As you get more users on board, you may have a curve where it starts off, hey, I'm having to invest more at the, at the onset, but it pays off faster. And our, if it pays off really fast, if it's refined, this purple line, that's what we consider to be ideal growth. All right. So before we, now that we've laid down the foundation of what we're trying to do and, and what's going on in the industry, let's talk about what is Azure Virtual Desktop. So in short, it's a virtual desktop infrastructure that's hosted in the cloud. So it's, it's VDI. As you're familiar, there are a couple of, of bells and whistles and capabilities that the cloud brings to it that makes this unique, that makes this deliver on a lot of the needed capabilities in the industry and delivers on what I think is the most important one, which is right now, the number one issue we see plaguing most of our customers, and that's customers in commercial and public sector, and, uh, all across verticals, is its access to IT talent. They are a lot, they, the median age for a lot of people working in IT administration continues to keep going up because fewer young people are getting into this. And a lot of them that do get into IT are going into things like software development, which is not really IT operations and administrations. And that's one of the things that we're seeing. So this is becoming a skill set that's in high demand that's hard to find right now. And so if you're going to be in this industry and you're going to be dealing with more and more devices, you're going to need good automation solutions that can deliver on all that capability. And so VDI, which has always been a management play, but it can also be a security play, becomes a very, very good strategy for delivering that. But one of the challenges is, which we'll get into in a second is, is that if you deploy traditional VDI, 
Well, there's some limitations with it that the cloud actually helps us solve. And one of the nice things about VDI is that unlike previous versions of virtual desktop infrastructures, which would oftentimes deliver a one-to-one -one solution, this is something that can deliver a multi-session host. What does that mean? It means I can handle a whole bunch of users on a single instance of that virtual desktop. And it is a true desktop environment. So it's not something that's pretending to be it's a Windows 10 environment or a Windows 11 environment, but in reality, it's a server. It's not doing that. This is a true Windows desktop. So they get that true compatibility capability. And since I have access to the cloud, I have access to all of the resources in the cloud, whether that's better storage on demand, better compute on demand, or maybe even GPU, high-end GPUs to handle that. So the big key is that if you do this correctly, if you enable the full automation of the platform and take full advantage of the capabilities that you're paying for, you can save time and save money and have better security. You're basically taking all of your endpoints and no matter how people access the endpoints, how they access the endpoints to get to their applications, to get to their data, you've basically put a bubble around all of them. You've rebuilt the perimeter. Now that everybody's working remote, perimeter security for your on-premise land, that's not sufficient because nobody's inside the perimeter at this point. They're all remotely. And so identities become the new perimeter. I've heard the buzzwords all the time. But this allows me to have complete control over that environment. So no matter what device, where it's being accessed from, I can deliver a standardized version of security that's completely scalable. So let's get into a little more details of what's going on here. So basically, Azure Virtual Desktop is a true VDI solution. Nothing is running on the client. You can access this from any device anywhere, as long as it has a browser. I think the, the worst example I've seen so far is that someone had an eight-year-old uh, Amazon Fire tablet and was accessing their desktop, and it worked fine, as long as it's able to resolve that SSL certificate that it's using to make sure that it's, it's, it is an authenticated session and log in, which you can layer on the, the different forms of MFA on top of this very, very easily. It's Azure AD is a piece of this. Um, you're able to get that secure session and it can be accessed from any device anywhere. It does require internet connection. Nothing is processing locally. So no resources are being consumed locally, which means that if somebody steals a device that's being used to access these sessions, they've got nothing. They've got no data. They've got no access to the applications. They've got nothing. And you have full interaction with everyone. It is for lack of, I mean, it, it's an RDP session. So if you're used to remote desktop protocol, if you're used to terminal services, this is the next evolution in that capability and that stack, but it's provided with a special version of Windows 10 that is only available from Microsoft or Windows 11. It's Windows 10 or Windows 11. And that is those versions of those desktop operating systems running as a multi-session host. So basically think all the capabilities that you've seen in, in terminal services, and remote desktop services, if you were to smash that together with Windows desktop operating systems that allow for multiple users to access the exact same instance, but because of other technologies that Microsoft has invested in and provides as part of that solution set, you get the ability to have a personalized desktop. It's not, it feels it's composed where it includes the standardized image, the security protocols that you layer on top and that end user's profile so that it feels and looks and acts as if it was a dedicated desktop that doesn't have to be running all the time. It's basically can be something that's either on demand or that throttles and shuts back down. So you're not burning resources in a public cloud you know, haphazardly, you're controlling the amount that you're consuming, so you control that cost. So I'm going to touch briefly about how this compares to other other solutions out there. So traditional endpoints, if you are buying traditional endpoints, you would be deploying one per per end user. They would, you know, not necessarily have unless you layered on other solutions. There wasn't. There's no remote access built into it. If you needed specialized graphics for an application, you'd have to make sure that each one of those ones came with the graphics cards it needs. And while licensing would be simple, you're going to pay, depending on if it's a really advanced system, you're going to pay a lot per system. 
And if you want to repurpose or reconfigure, it's a lot of services. And unless you have the automation systems in place, you're going to pay a lot for that capability. We look the next layer down at traditional VDI, and you get a little more flexibility. Now everything's hosted in the data centers, so I'm limited by the hardware that's hosting the environment now. I have remote access, so that's nice, but licensing is really complicated. And that can be expensive at first. I mean, again, you're going to pay a lot more for that. And again, if I wanted to reconfigure that hardware on the fly, I can't do that very easily. I have to go buy that. I have to. There's a whole bunch of that. So it's not a very, very flexible solution, although it does solve some of those challenges. We get down into Azure VDI and Azure Virtual Desktops, and you can see that there are a lot of benefits that may, that may make it easier for you to deploy applications, to even do a proof of concept, to play around with this environment, to reconfigure, to patch even in full production without impacting users. So they just reboot their system and boom, or they basically re-log into their session, excuse me. And now they've got access to the new patches, the new applications. It's very easy to layer those solutions on top of that. So because we, again, how is this different? Because we have access to cloud level resources. I am not constrained by any hardware requirement whatsoever. You wanna do multi-monitor, great. You wanna support SolidWorks or the Adobe Creative Cloud, or you wanna be working with high-end graphics or high-end compute applications that need to be able to deliver that solution. I have access to anything that, that is available in Microsoft's cloud. I have access to all those compute and the catalog is extremely robust and it is kept current. They are constantly refreshing. I believe right now the average life cycle for hardware inside Azure right now, I think is three years, but I may need to check that. If anybody knows, uh, please let me know. Uh, compatibility is a non-issue. If it runs on a Windows desktop, if it runs on somebody's local workstation today, this will work inside Azure Virtual Desktop. There's no need to test it. If you know that your applications run in remote desktop services, something that a lot of us should have familiar with as IT administrators, it's 100% compatible with this solution. And again, as long as I've got access to a browser, it is any application can be accessed from any device anywhere. I need access to a browser, which of course requires access to the internet. And this works even with Chromebooks. In fact, that's one of the solutions that we worked with on some of our customers who were doing uh, advanced teaching remote learning during this time of pandemics. They were doing remote learning sessions and they took all the stuff that was being accessed through Auto, uh, Autodesk for AutoCAD through 3D SolidWorks and the, and the Adobe Creative Cloud, stood them up inside Azure Virtual Desktop and then gave all of their endpoints, all their end users Chromebooks. And here's the best part. So if you are already a subscriber to Microsoft 365, you're already licensed. You may already be a winner. If you have Microsoft 365 E3 or G3 or A3 and above subscriptions, you already have all the licensing you need to take advantage of this. You still have to buy the Azure resources, which is what we would help you do the sizing on that. And that's a very quick conversation. But you've already got all the licensing you require to do this. If you have Microsoft Small Business Premium, you're already fully licensed for the capability to have access to the solutions. And so it's a really great way to quickly deploy end users. And this time of constraints, when it's hard to get access to, like, to actually take delivery of hardware and other components, Azure Virtual Desktop is a great stopgap solution because you can deploy end users at any time very quickly. And again, some of the other capabilities, FSO, the fact that I told you about the multi-session Windows client, FS logic is how they manage all the personifications, all the, pro the profiles and persona, all that's stored on a file server that's managed by this software called FS logic that Microsoft in invested in and is included with that licensing. And that's the other thing. This is efficient. It is not running the full solution 100% of the time. It's ballooning and collapsing. It's expanding and base, you can have it so that it does it on a time basis or that it's doing it on demand and that there's a bare minimum so that it's always available 24 seven without having you run a full VDI environment and with for 100% of your usage. You don't have to sit there and, and burn Azure resources, which cost you money at the most expensive 
level. You can have it so it's collapsing down and shutting systems off and reducing cost all over the place. A couple of use cases that I want you to keep in mind. So again, we have, if you want to basically provide a wall around all of your endpoints, here's easy cybersecurity. If you've got specific applications or solutions or desktop experiences you want people to have, you've got an easy way to deploy that very, very quickly and an easy way to tear it back down. If you've got any high-end graphics, high-end engineering, ArcGIS, if you're working with any of those solutions, Adobe Auto, uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, uh, the Autodesk, AutoCAD, I've already mentioned SolidWorks. If you've got high-end graphic applications, this is an easy way to deliver them. Now, I will admit that if that hey, that the, there are people out there that may say, hey, I still want that dedicated or my application requires that. You can actually still do that with this solution and give them a completely dedicated solution, but as a one-off, not as the standard format so that if you've got people that are lower level users, maybe they don't require you deliver the same level hardware you have for your power users. And right now the ratios we see on the number of virtual instances to the number of users, the best I've seen so far on high-end stuff is right around maybe eight to 10 to one. Uh, for task workers, as Microsoft keeps updating the capabilities of the, inst the hardware supporting all these virtual instances running in Azure, uh, we're seeing the numbers just trend the exact right way so that you get a better cost per value. For every you know, dollar you're spending, you're getting more and more value out of that dollar in Azure. And then if you've got users that need elastic support. So if you're trying to get around, if you've got seasonal users, this is a great solution. Uh, if you've got high turnover, if you're basically, as I already mentioned, onboarding because of supply constraints, if you're trying to figure out what a good BYOD strategy is, here's a way that I don't even care if somebody is sideloading applications because I can basically prevent them from doing anything to the actual virtual desktops itself. Those are in a bubble. And again, we, these are real numbers based upon number of users and based upon taking advantage of other capabilities when you go into Azure for longer and longer. So you get an idea of the price per user per month. These are real numbers that I ran for our customers. And there you can see that as we get to more and more users that I get, it's lower and lower cost per user per month. Whether you were signed up for just a month or whether you were taking advantage and say, hey, I'm going to leverage reserve instances over a year or I'm going to lever leverage reserved instances over three years. And if you're worried about any of that stuff, there are ways that that data networks, we've been working with the solution for a while now, we can actually help you drive that cost down even lower. And that's where my next slide is. There are ways for us to automate all of this for you so we can have that. If you want to manage it yourself, great. We have solutions that we can set up for you and you'll provide the ongoing maintenance and management of the solution, not a problem. And that will help you get control so that it is not still too expensive. So that it's giving you that, it, yes, it's based all on imaging, but it's based on imaging that you are leveraging the capabilities of the, the FX logic, whether that's masking applications to that that group of users only sees the application they're supposed to, can only sees the data that, that you want them to, even though it's all the same image, so that you're able to re have that image automatically refresh whenever there's a security update and can deliver near zero downtime as you uh, change from the old version of the image to the new image, while also delivering that, person that, uh, that personalized experience where people's, you know, everybody who saves all their shortcuts to their desktop, they see, all those shortcuts where they have access to their files, their data, and they don't see, even though it's a multi-session host that more than one's accessing that same instance, they're not seeing that other user and there's no contention. So with that in mind, if you are interested in diving down deeper into this, We've got a little bit of a, uh, so you know what kind of time commitment it's gonna, it's gonna take to work, work with us at Data Networks to help you get a good feel for what this would cost and what it then come up with a good design or even a proof of concept. And that is, if you have, would like to do a simple uh, budgetary sizing, a, a sample budgetary sizing and pricing, I'm gonna need probably about 30 minutes of your time to go over your apps, to make sure it's a good solution, make sure your licensing is correct and then go through the sizing and give you, here's a rough estimate of what we think the cost is and a layout. Here's what I think the cost is for management. Here's what I think the cost is 
for the Azure resources. And here's what we think the licensing you would need if you have to go and purchase that. And if there are any other gotchas, you want to get into a demo, I'm going to need about an hour of your time to go through that demo and to make sure that, that that's going to meet, make sure we're addressing the needs because this is a super customizable solution, even though it's all based on standards, all based on imaging, and it's going to promote more standardization in your, in your environment. I do want to make sure that, that it, we are specifically tuning those demos because it's it's everything you can think of in terms of applications. I can run pretty much anything on these systems. If you want to get into a custom design, uh, we're going to need to work together for about two to four hours. So if you can tolerate listening to my voice for two to four hours, great. But that's the amount of time I'm going to need from you. Want to do a full-blown proof of concept, great. And if you would just like to overlay, if you've already been playing with Azure Virtual Desktop and you want to overlay the automation solutions on top of that, we, we've been talking about on top of that, whether it's us doing it or you going and do it on your own, you're going to need about one to two hours with us. Yeah, again, please, please check out our website. We try to make sure that we're keeping that up to date with fresh content. But I've been playing with this uh, Azure Virtual Desktop now since probably around 2017. And this is one of the solutions that I've just watched evolve more and more and become a better value for my customers. So I hope you'll check it out either on your own or harass us and we'd be more than happy to set up and get you up and running and play around with us even more. Or to, if you wanna get into a full-blown project, of course we can help you with that. So I wanna thank everybody for their time.